a session, given that we did see Wall Street down by half a percent mm. overnight. But I think one of the things that the market has been watching very closely is expectations around the Federal Reserve. And the fact that in the US we're not seeing much inflation, and if anything we're seeing consumer spending going backwards, means that the market's putting off expectations around the liftoff in US interest rates. And the one commodity that's great news for is gold prices. It means that there's no carry costs for gold for a longer period of time. And we certainly have seen gold doing quite well on the back of those expectations. In fact, in today's session, we saw a new year high for Evolution Mining as well as Northern Star. And just in this year to date, the gold subsector is up by a massive 50%. And that's why our market hasn't done too much at all. And today, some fantastic performances. Just in today's session, Evolution Mining up 7.4%, St. Barbara up 6.4%, and the big one in that sector, Newcrest Mining up by 5.4%. So gold was a standout, the materials, the energy sector did well, and of course, the job numbers out at 11.30 a.m. on our market were a big event. You can see from the intraday graph behind me, we just saw a ramp up to 11.30 when those job numbers were released. Job numbers were disappointing and the market came back down to earth before climbing the rest of the afternoon. So it does look like the market in the end really just overturned uh, those weak job numbers and just ignored them and it was another game. Julie, just on the gold price, what happens though when they do hike rates? I think that's when uh, gold becomes more difficult, um, when there is a carry cost to gold and also an indication that that would probably also be an indication that the world's largest economy, the US economy had uh, stabilised and that global growth expectations had also stabilized. So gold does tend to do well in an environment where there is a lot of central bank tinkering, especially with quantitative easing. And given the low expectations around global growth and expectations that we will see more quantitative easing, especially out of Europe and Japan to help uh, growth rates in those areas, um, gold's been the beneficiary. Mm. So as long as we see expectations continue to be delayed around liftoff, that's going to be a positive to gold. But once we see the positive, uh, once we see the opposite, we're expecting to see a, a negative hit to gold. But of course, a lot of the Australian gold story has been around our currency and the fact that the Australian dollar has depreciated more than 10% this year against the US currency means that the Aussie gold miners have been doing well. Recently, we have seen strength in the uh, we have seen uh, strength in terms of the Aussie dollar, but then the opposite has proved true, that we're seeing strength in terms of the gold price in US dollar terms. Rick, have you been looking good value to you at the moment? Absolutely. I think there's a lot of stocks in the healthcare space which have seen, have seen a significant pullback um, and are looking quite attractive. I guess with CSL there is that exposure to currency, especially the euro that we've been watching that has had an impact on stocks like CSL as well as Ansel in that space. But certainly some of those stocks which are exposed to the domestic healthcare space like primary healthcare and sonic healthcare, I think the sell-off has been overdone and we've started to see some interest emerging this week. In fact, mm. I saw I, I bought primary healthcare on Monday, <laughs> so hopefully it continues upwards. But uh, there has been a significant pullback in terms of the healthcare space, and I think there are some attractive valuations. And remember, this is a sector that's been an outperformer now for a number of years, so it's been a while since we've seen a pullback like this for the healthcare space. Yeah, your thoughts 